get comfortable where you're going to do your Netflix special. <laughs> we definitely want to see that happen. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. We're going to kick back, we're going to relax, and we're just going to talk about you a little bit. How about that? Okay? So the theme for this year for the speaker series is my vision, my power. Through your vision, through your power, how do you want to make an impact? What do you want people to know about Ricky Smiley? I just want people to be inspired. Um, uh, and, and, say, and I want a light to pop on when mm -hmm. I talk to people. I just hope that some young people tonight heard what I had to say and a light popped on for them because I'll never forget my freshman year. I went to Tus I did go to Tuskegee my freshman year. Mm -hmm. So uh, Marching Crimson Piper. Anyway, uh, Jesse Jackson came mm -hmm. and spoke. And, and, and I think that was one of the moments where a light went on for me. Uh, he spoke in the chapel. And uh, he was talking about um, one thing he said I'll never forget. Uh, just because you live in the projects don't mean that the projects live in you. Mm -hmm. And man, that, that it, I don't know, it, 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 I was sitting up in the balcony and I really, it literally brought tears in my eyes and I, I knew I wasn't the smartest. I knew I wasn't going to stay at Tuskegee, but I figured I was going to go to some university and finish, which I in, ended up at Alabama State. Mm -hmm. And I was just really inspired by that and I really wanted to make something out. So I hope that I touched somebody tonight and made a light pop Absolutely. on for somebody. Yeah. So you're, you're a comedian, yep. an actor, mm -hmm. television host, radio personality, entrepreneur. You talked about stepping outside of your comfort zone. So you're smiling because look at all that you've accomplished. It feels good, right? So what motivated you to want more? And what was the factors that made you step out of your comfort zone? Man, you know, being broke sitting over there. <laughs> No car, no job, no money. You're looking at TV, uh -huh. and like we all serving the same God, and all these people get to do all these things. We sit over here with nothing, you know, and um, I, I, it was like I had to figure out how to make it. Yeah. Um, they took us, I was playing Little League football, Tarrant, Tarrant Wildcats, and uh, they took us down to the University of Alabama to watch the Alabama football team practice. My uncle, later Anthony Smiley, signed a scholarship to play for Coach Paul Bear Bryant at the University of Alabama. They had a bye week where they didn't have a game, so my grandmother put me on the Greyhound bus. Mm -hmm. I don't even know, just answering your question, but... <laughs> it's okay. I took the Greyhound bus to Tuscaloosa, and that was the first time I stayed in a college dormitory. I was like, wow. Uh -oh. Going down there, eating with all the football players that had just won the national championship, because it was 1980. They won the national championship in 1979. Then they said, we're going to a Greek show. I said, what is that? They said, well, just come on, just go. We're we, we, we taking you to a Greek show. And uh, next, I seen the Alphas on stage and yeah. the AKAs, and I'm sitting up there, and the, I seen the Deltas and the Sigmas, Zeta Phi Beta, Sigma Gamma Rho, Kappa Alpha Psi. Then I saw the, the uh, and then all of a sudden, everybody started screaming, these big, big built, incredible hook looking dudes with these... <laughs> Gold boots came out. And I'm sitting in the back and they're like, I'm going to be one of them right there. <laughs> yeah! Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to get us beat up. Don't do that. Uh, uh, that. That was a life visiting the universe. And that's why I'm a big Alabama fan, not just because I like Alabama football. Mm -hmm. It really changed my life. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to get something when you haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and one of the things mm -hmm. I, I want to start doing is, is giving kids more exposure. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and I know in Pittsburgh, I'm going to shut up. In Pittsburgh, some Pittsburgh Steelers, they get a lot of at-risk kids. They had a salad set up. And they teach kids etiquette. Teach them how to tie a tie. They teach them table manners. Like, I got so excited about that. I'm like, yeah. You know, teaching you the, the, the cues of dining and all of that stuff. And I just think that's so important. Kids, if you have it on your phone, if you don't get an opportunity for somebody to teach you etiquette, please pull it up on your phone. There's YouTube videos that teach you how to talk, how to speak, how to dine, how to take a picture. I talk, I'm a man. I taught my daughters... How I make my daughters cross their ankles when they take pictures because 
most girls you see on Instagram, their pictures be like that. And a, a lot of with young ladies, they don't know how to pose for a picture. And I'm a man. And I had to teach my daughters how to sit on a stage. Or, I'm, just, I'm, I'm like, for real. I get excited about stuff like that because guess what? It comes, it comes in handy. Because when you go on that job interview, kid, okay. when you go on that job interview, and, and before you ever go on a job interview, and if it's at dinner, go ahead and eat you a bowl of cereal before you go so you won't be real hungry. So the focus is on the conversation and not the food. Because they're watching you. Every little move you make with that knife and that fork and how you handle yourself, how you make eye contact with the waiter and the waitress, thank you kindly. You know, some people are real dismissive to waiters and waitresses when they're dining. Yeah, let me have some. Uh, they don't say thank you when the lady bring the wine or their tea or whatever. Thank you kindly. Hi, yes, I was like, how was your day? You understand? You know how many people I could, I'm going to shut up. You know how many people... <laughs> I correct every day for walking up to me and ask me for a picture and don't speak. It makes me so angry. Uh -huh. It's so, it makes me, how do you ask anybody for something and not acknowledge the person that you're asking something from? But borrow my word, uh -huh. and people say on the internet, he real mean, I'm not mean. I will correct you on the spot because what you did just had an effect on me. You don't get to ask me for a picture and not speak to me and acknowledge me as a person. If I ask you, say, hey, you're a beautiful woman. Let's go back to my apartment and let's uh, have uh, <laughs> Netflix and chill. No dinner? Hi, my name is such and such. And when people say, can I get a picture? I said, how are you today? Uh -huh. My name is Ricky Smiley. What is your name? Hi, my name is Ricky Smiley. Welcome to Birmingham, Alabama. We are so happy to have you. Have you had food? Is there anything you need? or any? I, can I point you to the right direction while you're in my town? You want food? Okay. They got the country kitchen over here. They got, uh, uh, what's the donut place? Long's Donut. Yes, sir, boy. <laughs> boy. Boy, on everything I love. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Killing Krispy Kreme. Killing them. Uh, common sense. Uh -huh. And common courtesy. We got to get back to that. Kids, hi. How are you today? My name is such and such. Nice to meet you. Welcome to such and such high school. Here's all the classes. If you need help with anything, here's my information. Here's my Instagram. Let me know. Southern hospitality. Just being nice and kind. It will take you so far. Cause I, I, I know people that got degrees. They got doctorate and PhD degrees on the wall. And will walk in a room and don't say good morning, how are you today? You know, and my grandmama called them educated fools. fools. Mm -hmm. I'm not smart. I'm a straight C's. Straight C's every six weeks. Well, boy, my grandparents taught me common sense and common courtesy. And that's how I ended up getting that job at from, from Showbiz Pizza to Tom McCann Shoes to Kenny Shoes to Floresheim Shoes to Hibbets to Foot Locker to Jeans West to the Comedy Club. I kept a job because I knew how to talk to people. Very kind, very respectful, not being sensitive. Ava, if you can't correct, if you can't, you, you got to be teachable and coachable mm -hmm. with a good attitude. Stand there and get cussed out. Stay out your feelings. Mm -hmm. Take the cuss out. Take the information. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Dion Alfred and called me and cussed me out a few times. And Miss H, Miss Kathy Hughes just recently cussed me out three months ago. I'm a 51 year old grown man with a grandson. I had to sit there and take it and say, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll make that correction. It'll never happen again. And hang up the phone and be respectful. Then she'll text me later, what you doing? <laughs> well, I'm um, nothing, nothing. I just got cussed out. I don't know. Because <laughs> if, if people can't correct you, then what's the purpose of moving you up to the next level? What's the purpose of making you the boss if you're sensitive you and you're in your feelings all the time? Okay, good. Yep, you got to be coachable. So, so speaking of being coachable, you know, of course, welcome to 106.7 WTLC. Thank you for having me. As our new morning man. 
Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And you have this feature, um, Black Tony. We love Black Tony. We really do. We finna, we you know, gonna, we're going to write him up tomorrow. He don't come yeah. to work. So, you know, he has a daily excuse of why he doesn't come to work. Right. Many people feel like Black Tony every day. It's hard to get up and go to work. So what do you say to those that they're having a tough time? They're trying to focus. They're trying to get on the straight and narrow. They want to feel good about where they go to work. So what would you say to somebody that's having a tough time going to work? Just like I said, man, try to figure out what your next hustle is. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you work for people, man, and uh, if you just don't see no light at the end of the tunnel and stuff, you to start, instead of going to the Bahamas on the weekend or going kicking for the weekend, start trying to make some preparation and figure out what the next move is. And get serious, and, and instead of taking a when you take that day off, <laughs> that need to be a day of interviews, and trying to figure Amen. out how to take your life and take yourself uh, to the next level and start you a side hustle. And uh, you know, it, it's it's That's it, good. it's tough. It's not easy. It's easy said and done, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, you just you just have to do it. Uh, faith without work. Uh, what is it? She said it. Yep, that's it. Um, so, right. Ricky, do you still have that, that song in your head from this morning? As the sun has its place up, up in, in the, the sky, sky, I love you so dearly. So I'm playing it. I'm doing it every day on the Rick's Mountain Morning Show. Yes. We got church in 60 seconds. Yes. Right? People like that church in 60 seconds. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. And I'm going to have a song. I'm going to play a song, one song that's going to be in your head all day and we did it for the first time today and everybody just loved it the internet just blew up we loved it i watched your ig like six times uh -huh. it, was, oh, really? it was good it was, that, that was good all this love the barge oh yeah that was in my head all day yeah you in love when you get to that part if 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 you in a car with somebody and that song comes on and you listen to it all the way through you you love her <laughs> right you love her a lot if you keep it on the song when he get to that last part. When he, That's when the it, indicator? When, boy, if, if he get to that part, as the sun has its place up in her, in the sky. If you get to that part right there, and she in the car, because if you don't like her, you going to change the station back to the hip hop station. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ain't going to sit up there and listen to an intimate, beautiful song like that and the chick in the car, I don't care, she could be over there smoking a cigarette. You'd be like, I love the way she pull off that Benson hitch. <laughs> That's so sexy. And then watch how she thump it out the window. Oh, I love you. <laughs> As the sun has its place up in the sky. Boy, I love that part, right? That song, yeah, it's in my head now. You started it. Back. It was in your head all day. Yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> that and uh, Whitney Houston, I'm Your Baby Tonight. We played that too. Yeah. Well, two songs in my head. I'm today. Your Baby Tonight. Yeah, yeah. See? Uh, You're giving me everything. Yes, yeah, I'm going to have to play that one. Okay, I'm going to put that on the list for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Sometime this week. That'll be Sometime handy. this week. Okay, cool. Yeah. You like that. I'm going to ask you the last question. I have a couple more, but I know that we have Don't quite a few the, questions. Do, we got time for two more. I ain't got nothing. Oh, we got time? Oh, okay, cool. I don't have to so, better work to find. So let's talk about Ricky Smiley for real. So how did being on a show with your family, balancing work, balancing family, and your kids, did it have an effect on your family positively or negatively? No, I just trained my kids uh, to look at my career no different from somebody being in the military. Mm. Military families have to do it. Uh, they have to, they, dads have to go overseas. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thank my mom and Miss Pat and Miss Bishop uh, for stepping up to the plate, holding the house down while I go out here and just make sure that I can set them up where they could be educated. And uh, they're fine. I'm like, you, you fine, you get through it, you get over it. You'll be fine. My, uh, I got three kids in college. Um, my daughter is a freshman at Baylor University. Uh, I met her mom <laughs> at the Marat Theater. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter was born here in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> The AKAs was out hanging that night. I'm like, what's up? Shot it with the thick eyebrows. Let me holler at you. We have a beautiful daughter. She's a freshman at Baylor University. Uh, she was born in, here in Indianapolis. Um, my oldest daughter is a senior at Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son is a 
freshman. He's a freshman uh, point guard at Alabama State University. And my oldest son is a comedian, Brandon. They're, that's the one that looked like me, but we have different values. But my other son looked just like, my other kids look like they mama and they have my values. But the one that looked just like me don't have my values. But yeah, but yeah, but I raised, I was able to raise him. Single dad, went to court, got custody, and raised him. And um, they're awesome kids. I thank God for them. That's beautiful. Especially my girls. So as we come to the end of, of Black History Month and all the amazing things that you're doing, Ricky, how do you plan on making history? Just, just uh, to get this show running smooth and uh, to get myself set up where I can do more things in the community, mm -hmm. uh, to send people to college. We are already promoting the HBCUs doing historical facts on the HBCU note. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it every single morning. Yep. with Rock T and having Jeff Johnson on the show talking about politics. We don't talk about politics as much as uh, Tom Joyner did. Our show moves a little bit faster because we're a lot younger. The age demographic is 25 to 54, so change is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and that's another thing. I, I can do a whole, I could have did a whole speech on we have to be open to change. Mm -hmm. And I'm a comedian, and I just do things different. Um, and, 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 but we're going to do some of the same things that Tom Joyner left and, and the wonderful legacy that he left just in a different way. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm excited about that more than the job. I'm excited about how many people that we're going to be able to educate, encourage, uh, motivate and, uh, and, and just, just mm -hmm. the platform and the power with just a word over the airways to do something good for somebody. Yeah. Because once you then bought you a house and a car and, and, and one or two jet skis off of uh, Craigslist, <laughs> the money ain't, the, the money ain't, ain't nobody sitting there counting money every day. Yeah. You understand? Because at the end of the day, I'm a real person. Mm -hmm. I got Tatino's party pieces in my deep freezer just like everybody else. Absolutely, yes. I got the chicken and turkey Popeyes. They be on sale at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And I will go to Popeyes on Thursday and get that $5 box. <laughs> what you know about that? Yes. Uh, Spicy or right. mild? So I mix them up. Spicy okay. and mild. Get the big piece <laughs> and then do the two look, the two dark pieces and then the big old breast. And if I'm real hungry, I'll sit there and I will eat through that whole breast in the car while listening to Steely Dan the Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, Jerry Rafferty. Uh, uh, I'm a, I'm a big, I listen to Delilah every night before I go to bed. Yeah, I, to I know I play, yeah. I love R&B, but I have to listen to Delilah because these white dudes uh, be on there and they be having these stories mm -hmm. and I need to keep my sensitive side. Cause She'll I bring think, it out cause, of you. Because the hip-hop station made mm -hmm. me too hard. But you get a guy on Delilah's show, she said, hi, uh, this is Delilah. She said, what can I do for you? And he said, yes, uh, I've been in love with Heather ever since the third grade. <laughs> Heather has eight kids by another man, and they're not together anymore. And I just want Heather to know that I still love her. She said, well, here's a song for you. Here's Air Supply. I'm on out of love. I'm so lost without you. I know you. <laughs> Y'all, well, my Delilah fan. <laughs> boy, every night I have to have Delilah, boy. <laughs> Keep me in my feelings, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I woke up the next morning to use women's secret deal. I said, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I'd have to say, Ricky, is um, on, on social, I was able to see your transition in December to your new, your new show in, in, in more of an adult show. And, and guys, I just want to tell you, like, the focus that he had and you saw where the studio was being revamped for Ricky. And Ricky was there every day for hours playing the piano, just soaking in the energy of this new season in his life. And I saw how serious you were taking it, how you were pulling the team together, and I just thought that that was amazing that you have heavy, you have, not that you have big shoes to fill, but 
you can tell that you felt the momentum on your shoulder and you wanted to come out with a bang. And you wanted to show and prove that you are Ricky Smiley walking in your own shoes. And, and I'd have to say, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Good.